Yesher Koach to Ben Jacobs. <clears throat> Slavery, oppression, civil disobedience, uprising, and freedom. This is the world we enter in the book of Shemot. This week we begin reading our master story, the defining narrative that dictates our moral behavior, a history that is particular to our people, but inspires a universal vision for all people who fight for liberation. The Exodus story transcends time and space. And this Shabbat, as we begin reading about our ancestors' march to freedom, we also remember and honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the modern day prophet who taught the Israelite Exodus as a blueprint for black and poor Americans' long fight for equality and dignity. As a nation, we are far from Dr. King's dreams of a person being judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Police violence, voter suppression, poverty, and mass incarceration are just a few of the existential threats that disproportionately affect black Americans. Dr. King was often called a modern day Moses, but in some ways he was quite different from Moses. Rather than leading his followers out from a narrow place to a new land of opportunity, Dr. King sought to change this narrow place, not seek out a new land. He sought to rebuild America itself as a land of equality for all. And so our two peoples have taken different paths to redemption. Time and time again, the Jewish people have made the journey from a narrow, oppressive place to a more spacious land, a place that offers more opportunity and freedom. Sometimes we've been forced by expulsion to leave. Sometimes we've left by choice. But this has been our pattern. We move from light to darkness, from privation to prosperity, from despair to hope, by leaving one land for another. The Jewish journey involves two lands, our origin and our destination. And those two lands are polar opposites. We have built our culture in reaction to the oppressive cultures we have experienced. So for example, the values of Egyptian society, fear and suspicion of the other, followed by degradation, cruelty, and endless work with no rest, are precisely the opposite values enjoined upon the people Israel, loving and welcoming the stranger, kindness, humane treatment of workers, and a weekly time to rest as a sign of our dignity as divinely created beings. The story of black America, on the other hand, is a story of the fight to transform this one land from a narrow space into an expansive space, to create equality where there is none, to create opportunity in the confines of a deeply racist country. To Jewish immigrants seeking refuge from their own Egypt, pogroms, and the devastation of the Holocaust in Europe, America was the promised land, the golden Medina, the golden country. But for black Americans, this land is Beit Avadim, the home of slavery. As James Baldwin wrote in 1967, for it is not here and not now that the Jew is being slaughtered. The Jewish travail occurred across the sea and America rescued him from the house of bondage. But America is the house of bondage for the Negro, and no country can rescue him. What happens to the Negro here happens to him because he is an American. He is a pariah in his own country and a stranger in the world. This is what it means to have one's history and one's ties to one's ancestral homeland totally destroyed. In the words of Langston Hughes, America never was America to me. And so we see a striking difference between our two peoples and experiences. America has meant something extraordinary to Jews. And even with anti-Semitism, which is surely disturbing and its rise in recent years, America is still America to white Jews. There's a potent symbol in the Parsha that I believe can speak to us, both as Jews and as Americans committed to furthering Dr. King's vision and fighting for black lives. As Moses is tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro in the wilderness, a messenger of Adonai appears to Moses in a blazing fire out of a bush. As he gazes at the bush, Moses sees that while the bush is burning, a nenu ukal, it's not consumed by the fire. As this wondrous sight catches Moses' attention, the voice of God comes forth from the fiery bush and tells Moses that he must rescue the Israelites from slavery take them out of the land of Egypt, and lead them to a fertile, spacious land. We usually focus on God's call to Moses and his initial resistance to that call. But let's consider for a moment the image of the burning bush. 
According to Midrash, the bush that is not consumed symbolizes the Israelite people. The blazing fire represents the Egyptians or any hateful society that has tried to extinguish our light. But the Jewish people refuses to be consumed. We have not and we never will allow the fires of oppression to destroy us. The bush resists and perseveres. And so also we never stop hoping, praying, and fighting for a better future, no matter what threat comes our way. And the same is true of black Americans. In Dr. King's 1967 speech, The Other America, he says that there are two Americas. Millions of people live in the first America, the one overflowing with the milk of prosperity and the honey of opportunity. But too many live in the other America, facing poverty and unemployment, shattered hopes and dreams. Dr. King's challenge to his listeners then and now is to open our eyes and take a good look at the other America and then commit to making this America one America for all. As the burning bush would not be consumed in the flames, Dr. King's passionate call endures despite the persistent racism and bigotry that plague our country. Black Americans survive and thrive despite the flames that seek to consume them. And all of us who seek to walk in Dr. King's path must never give in to the deadening weight of despair. So there is a powerful commonality that joins Jewish and black. Both of us are here for good in America. We're not going anywhere. Both of us know that America can and must be better, and both of us will keep fighting until we realize our dreams. Abused and scorned though we may be, said the modern day prophet, our destiny is tied up in the destiny of America. Before the Pilgrim Fathers landed at Plymouth, we were here. Before Jefferson etched across the pages of history the majestic words of the Declaration of Independence, we were here. Before the beautiful words of the Star Spangled Banner were written, we were here. For more than two centuries, our forebears labored here without wages. They made cotton king. They built the homes of their masters in the midst of the most humiliating and oppressive conditions. And yet, out of a bottomless vitality, they continued to grow and develop. Dr. King celebrated his people's persistence and promised that nothing would stop them on their march to equality. He said, we're gonna win our freedom because both the sacred heritage of our nation and the eternal will of the Almighty God are embodied in our echoing demands. And so I can still sing, we shall overcome. We shall overcome because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Amen.